Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video. Today we're going to talk all about how you can get that awesome pop in your skin and we're going to use army paint or speed paints. Oh yeah, let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vinci V style. <laughs> Some time back, I had done some work on this Barbarian figure when I was reviewing the Pro or Pearl Paints, uh, the new signature series from Ben and Matt. And I really liked these. I, as I said then, and I agree with now, that new signature series really does an excellent job in partnership with the signature series that Ninjon and myself put out in forming a, a sort of range of paints that I really enjoy and like having on the desk. However, uh, when we're working on skin, it's really the thin filters, the final touches, and the variations in hue and value that end up shaping our perception of reality. Skin is one of the most fascinating and fun things to paint. Skin is translucent. It has high amounts of tonal variation. It has lots of inconsistencies and color changes throughout it. There are tones of reds and purples and blues and greens and all that stuff in all of our human skin, depending on the light of the room we're in uh, and just sort of the nature of where we are, or the, our, our base skin tone and so on and so forth. So as a result of that, one of the things you can do to really take your skin to the next level when you're working on a display piece or a competition piece is work in these final filters and colors. And so today I'm going to take you through using Army Painter Speed, Point, Speed Paint 2.0 and using some of their really awesome range to add that pop, those final filters to your skin to really make it just jump off the model. I mean, metaphorically speaking. Let's get over to the desk and we're going to get, and I'm going to show you how we do this. Let's talk about the paints we're going to use today. So these are the Speed Paint 2.0s we're going to use to tone this skin. I love all of these. They all have use, but you can go a lot farther. Pick any other colors you want in the range. But I found that each of these adds a really unique and interesting uh, sort of filter over the skin, and it has a really high value. But I'm going to show you how they all look and how they all work, and we'll go from there. So here's where he's starting. And admittedly, you know, the skin looks good. It's fine. It's not that this is bad. We're already at a pretty decent place. This is what came out of the video um, before. But it doesn't have the real life and value that we could. So as we start, you see I'm going to share the paint every time. But I really want to talk about what I'm doing here. So first of all, all of this is done uh, uh, with my uh, Infinity uh, airbrush. This is a 0.2 needle running at 18 PSI. And I'm just barely touching the trigger, as you can see. Um, all these paints, by the way, are thinned three to one. So three airbrush thinner to one drop of speed paint as they're here in the mix. And you'll notice I'm being very, very careful with where I go. Now this first one, it's very transparent. This is a, this is a boil the frog. Uh, is that right? Boil the lobster, boil the frog? I don't know, whatever. This is a very slow, gentle process, but you can tell even with this first one, notice that like rich yellow tone that gets around there. It's very subtle, but it adds immediately a lot of warmth and life as though he's in a more uh, sunny environment. And I'm just m working the airbrush around, barely touching the trigger. You'll notice when my airbrush comes on screen, like at certain points here, you'll actually see it come up, that I'm holding the trigger with both my finger and my thumb. And that's so I can just barely, barely rock it. Notice how much more rich that looks already. So already we're in a better place. We could stop here and this would be a better step because it's added that yellow tone to the skin of that warm sunlight. But we're going to go farther. Now we're going to grab this warrior skin, which is that light reddish brown. We're going to go down a step. So there I was shooting everything but the highest highlights. Now I'm going to work a little more down into the shadows. And look, this does take trigger control. I, uh, this needle is very, very precise. This airbrush is very, very light. I, I, you can be a surgeon with it but it still takes practice. Like you, one of the most common questions I get is how do you avoid spider webbing? And the answer when you're working this thin, because this is already an extremely thin paint that I've thinned three to one, so three thinner to one paint. And, and the answer is really just practice, right? I, I'd love to tell you there's some other secret. Um, you can lower your PSI down if you like uh, some, but if you go too low, the airbrush just kind of stops working. 
But, my, but what I'm doing here is working, you'll see, from below, shooting up at the muscle structures. But I also want to talk about how I'm focusing as I go down into the shadows. So now we've added a little bit more of that red-brown. We're starting to get even richer, more life-infused shadows. These are all filters. They're not meant to change the color. They're meant to work over top of the color to be translucent. So now we have this light purplish red, which we're going to go even deeper in the shadows. But every time I'm working less and less shadows. So what I mean by that is I'm not just working every shadow equally. Okay? So I'm focusing on things like uh, the deepest shadows here. So there's a lot more focus onto like the lower part of the model and the his right side because the light is coming from his left. So over here where you can see this is where I'm really driving in and really pushing that shadow. And that's because I want to show that directional light coming from the side. And so the overall volume is going to be such that there's those deeper shadows extend farther on the left side. I never will get down to the deepest deepest shadows on the on the sorry on the left side of the model. So in his lower back, on his right side, on his lower legs, that's where we're focusing more attention. The other thing I want to draw your attention to here is how I'm doing this. So the the actual application method. And what I mean by that is I'm working in these short bursts letting it dry, working my way around the model, and doing about two to three passes with every color. I'm not trying to change the world with the first pass. With this layer, we're going for a little bit of Frazetta, uh, or a little bit of Braum, or something like that, where we have these green tones worked into the lower parts of the model, or the deep shadows. Uh, it just kind of makes it a little more otherworldly. It ties it in with the environment. So in the same way we brought the yellow tones into the highlights, to reflect that sunlight, we're bringing in these green tones to sort of uh, cool down and, and earthify the shadows. That's a word, right? Sure it is. Why not? And yet again, so I work. I give a very light filter. It has almost no effect. It'll be much more impactful when you first put it on. As it dries, it will fade and somewhat disappear. And I work my way around. Here, especially, I'm focusing almost completely on the lower side of the model, the bottom of the hands, the deepest shadows only, that kind of stuff. And then that's adding that other rich hues to those deepest shadows. Now, one thing I will say is you see me doing most of this with the airbrush. A lot of times when I work with the airbrush, I say you can do all of this with a brush as well. And that is sort of true here. I will be honest with you. I have tried both varieties. I have worked both ways. The speed paint is so good through the airbrush for this purpose. I am loving it. And it's this, this techniques you're seeing me use here are showing up in basically all of my competition pieces. So this is the highest level work I can do. The problem is when it's applied through the brush, a lot of the additives that are there to help it run and act like speed paint kind of take over. So it's a little bit more difficult to get that smooth, even coat through the brush. So if you're just trying to work on something uh, sort of, you know, for tabletop or tabletop plus, yeah, you could get away with this and use this for the same purpose. I do think through the brush, it's going to be harder to hit that display or competition. Not impossible, but just harder. And you know, I always want to be honest with you and give you the real picture of sort of exactly what you're looking at in the challenge in front of you. But let's go back to the desk and, and we'll keep at it and I'll show you how we can add some more cool tones. All right, he's looking a lot more toned. He's, he's looking more tanned. There's more environmental colors. We've got some of that green. Now we've got this pale reddish brown. This one isn't so much of a shadow color. It's more just baking in some more of that tan. I really love this tone and I love the way it makes skin feel sweaty and uh, much more like sepia toned. It has a really, really nice color to it. It's very minimal, but it's there and it just saturates the, that mid-tone to shadow area transition to really give you a lot more depth of life, of color, of deeply tanned skin. You know, this guy's a, like a barbarian. I picture him being out. He's not wearing a shirt here, and he's clearly ready for battle. I assume most of the time he's not wearing a shirt. 
So, you know, he should have these rich reds and browns and have that toned skin, but he's also sweaty and skin is naturally satin. So it's going to have those really high value light pops on it where it's really catching and reflecting the light. He's out in bright sunlight, right? He's out in the day, he's ready for battle. And so we just work those tones in. Now this one with the blackish blue, um, this one is still thinned. Uh, I think actually with this one, I did thin four to one. This one went even thinner. Uh, but this is for the deepest, deepest shadows. And this is to get some of those cold tones down into the shadows because the deepest shadows should have just a little bit of blue tone to them. So here you'll notice I'm working almost completely from his right side. Like that is my huge focus. And I'm not gonna, you know, do any of these shadows from his left. I'm not gonna work in any shadows on like the left side of the abs or, and, or, or the left side of the pec or anything like that because then we'll, we'll get muscle island syndrome. Only on the shadow side of the miniature do these deep blue infused shadows show. So we have these nice warm yellow highlights. We've got some green hue down by the bottom to bring in the earth tones. And then in the other shadows, especially on the cold side of him, the way facing away from the sunlight, we have this nice, really cold shadows. So warm highlights, cold shadows. Now we can see the real difference. Our final step here is just one more toning to add just a little more life, a little more red, especially in the lower shade areas. Um, this is just the final steps, like hit the cheeks, to hit the areas I want there to be blood, to be life. Very subtle red tones, eyes pick them up really easy, and they make things feel very alive. Humans are trained to see the color red as being something that that's, has blood in it, that is full of life. And so when we bring a little more of that subtle red tone in, again, just reintroducing a little bit of that saturation, especially into the mid-tones and low shadows, we then make that feeling of life come back and be infused. Still working my way around the miniature. You notice since that early step, I haven't gone anywhere near my highlights. I'm letting those rest and be where they are. And most of what I'm doing is toning down and filtering everything else from just off the highlight down to the deepest shadows adding this tonal variation and hue. And there's how he came out. Now this is a little, a little bit of a jump. There's the original, there's the new one. When you first saw the original, you thought, yeah, that looks pretty good, maybe. I mean, I don't know what you thought, but hopefully that. But now you can see how much more alive and tanned and really, uh, you know, he feels, right? There's just a, so much more variance and energy and, and life to the skin. So that's using speed paints and how much life you can add. They are perfect for this task. There we go. Uh, this guy's all done. Uh, I am super pumped about this fig. I think he came out awesome. I love painting, you know, just cool barbarians. And this was a really fun end of the project. It was great to pick it back up after all this time since the original video. Uh, and I was just really excited to have it done and now on my shelf. So uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I really appreciate it. If you feel I did a great enough job today, hey, hit like, hit subscribe. It really helps the channel and I appreciate it. If you wanna take the next step and support everything we do here, you can do that by the Patreon link down below uh, where that Patreon is focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. We'd love to have you as part of the community. As always, I thank you so much for watching this one and we'll see you next time.